Eric in Minneapolis is divorced, and the OC Birdman of South OC is getting divorced. Should Eric contribute to pre-tax retirement accounts or Roth? How should the Birdman and his soon-to-be ex time the sale of their house and the filing of their taxes? That's today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 469. Plus, Don has questions about the 401k rule of 55 and excess 529 plan college savings. And Valerie in Portland wants to know what to do with her old 401k and and how to invest her new retirement accounts. An advisor tells k Dog in Indiana to save cash or open a Roth, then live on those funds and get free health care in early retirement. Is that really possible? Also, what should Laura in Seattle's sequence of retirement withdrawals be? And is there any benefit to her doing Roth conversions? Should RJ in Anaheim convert his or his wife's rollover IRA to the top of the giant 24% tax bracket? I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson, CFP, and Big Al Clopine, CPA. Got Don from everywhere, USA. Must drive a little RV. (laughs) Did you read this in advance? (laughs) No, I didn't. Um, Oh, You wrote that. Did he write that or did you write that? Read on. All right. (laughs) Hey, Andy, Joe, Big Al, my wife. And I love the show. We listen on hikes, walks, long drives. Just a couple of quick questions for you. Number one, rule of 55. Do I have access to only my current employer 401k when I re- retire at 55? If I roll prior employer 401ks into my current plan before retiring, will I have access to the money before age 59 and a half? I know, I know. Don't roll the 401k to an IRA if I want access between age 55 and 59 and a half. Got it. He wants to retire at 55. Apparently, He's yeah. got some monies. Yep. Rolling into the 401k. Does he have access to the money at 55? The answer is yes. Yeah. In in an active 401k, as long as you retire at age 55 or, 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 older. Late, or older, right? And you have money in, in your company's 401k, you retire, you can pull, have access to it. Of course, you'll pay taxes on it like any withdrawal from a retirement account, but you don't pay the 10% penalty. Cause you can, And that's true at age 55 all the way to 59 and a half. 59 and a half, you can take any money out of any retirement plan without penalty. Most people don't know that. So rule 55, 401ks only. You have penalty-free withdrawals at age 55 if you separate from service at age 55. Only for that plan, not your old plans, only that plan that you have at that point. And not IRAs. IRAs is always 59 and a half. Right. So what happens is people retire at 55. Let's say they need the money, but they roll it into an IRA. Now they don't have access to it until 59 and a half, unless they do a 72T tax election or some yeah, you know, which, which is, stuff like that. Which is not only a little bit complex, it also, you, you won't get out near as much as you want. Yeah, it's not great. Okay. Next question. He goes, leftover 529 money. Can you think of any reason why this is a bad idea? We save our kids leftover 529 money for the benefit of future grandchildren. Wow, these guys are planners. Yeah, they are. And our kids can gift us money out of the kindness of their hearts. Everyone wins. Our kids get some college funds for their kids starting from a large balance rather than zero. And we get a future tax-free income stream. Being cognizant of the annual gift tax exclusion. Oh, boy. Yeah. Is this guy CPA? <laughs> it could be. During the Social Security <laughs> RMD phase of life. I could just see his spreadsheets now. Oh, yeah. Or an engineer. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, that's fine. Just keep funding. I'm, I, I guarantee the guy's loaded anyway. <laughs> He's got an abundance of cash. If you need the cash flow, this it, it does work, right? But otherwise... I don't know. If 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 you got the cash, most people would say it was for the kids. Now it's for the grandkids. End of story. Yeah, but right? he's going to get a, a tax free tax, loan, tax free income, kids. right? Yeah. Now, like I say, if you need it, fantastic. If you don't need it, I would just it let it go kids. to the grandkids. All right, sure. There would be negative impact on the financial aid for the grandkids, and yeah, there might be some required generational skipping tax filings, right? Uh, no. But are we missing anything here? The reason the generation skipping tax filings is generally when you're over over the the exclusion, exclusion. which is what, 13 million per person at the moment? That's a lot of schooling. It's it's a lot of education, but (laughs) it's a ton of education there. Uh, We are full time RVers. Um, 
Okay. Well, you were right. Yeah. I've, I've got this guy nailed down. I've already pictured what he looks like. I know what he's driving. I know what he's wearing. I know what he's drinking. <laughs> For 13 years now, Hans the Everywhere USA, official residence of San Diego, or SD. That's South Dakota. South Dakota, not My San bad. Diego. That's, I guess I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that it will factor in any of your answers. Uh, lately, we've been thinking of following Big Al around on his many globetrotting vacations just in case he drops his fat wallet. That's possible. Yeah, it's going to Belize next week. <laughs> there you go. See if the RV will make it to Belize. Yeah, drive quickly. What? What about that? To fall in the wrong hands, we got your back, Big Al. We drive a 2019 Ram 3500 diesel. Well, that's a big truck. Yeah, does the job pulling our fifth wheel beautifully. We both enjoy a light lager and a wide variety of fruity drinks. If we're looking for a little more kick in the pants, we deserve it sometimes. Long Island iced tea or honey mead if it's the bill. Mead. Honey oh, mead. Honey mead. It fits the bill. Okay. Thanks for all you do. See you down the road. All right, Don. Awesome question. Good comments. Hello, my sister has been a raving. Has been raving. Well, it's the sister. Sister's been raving about our podcast. Has actually had her questions aired on the podcast. Yeah. Okay. She's a Maserati driver. I remember Maserati. Yeah. Me, Maserati lady. Me too. She had millions. <laughs> uh, I'm not nearly as fancy as, a, fancy as my sister. I drive a dependable 2019 Honda CRV. Only a couple payments left and appreciate a nice cold can of dry cider. My financial question goes like this. I recently started a new job at the community college, and I'm wondering what to do with my old 401k, a mix of Roth and traditional, and how to invest in my new employer's retirement options. I'm rolling my old 401k plan to an IRA. Good idea. How does this work with two types? If I only have a Roth IRA currently, I have about 20% of my gross income to invest. Should I go pre-tax with the 403b or 457? or a post-tax brokerage account. I re- already fully fund a Roth IRA every year. Community college retirement automatically invest funded funds by employer PERS. So it's a public employee retirement system there, 6% of income. Yep. 403B is 2% of income. Additional invest options of personally fund without matching 403B and 457. Thank you for your time and consideration, Val. Marie. <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, first question is you, you got a 401k that has a Roth and traditional. You want to roll it into an IRA. Fine idea. You just have to set up an IRA. You got a Roth IRA already. Set up a regular IRA also. And the Roth part goes into the Roth IRA. The traditional 401k part goes into the traditional IRA. Simple easy, as that. Easy. Yep. Is it a good idea? Sure. You got more investment options. You have more control. Could right. be more expensive, could be cheaper. Could be cheaper, yeah. So um, it, it, dep- it depends on your new plan. Maybe your new plan is great, and maybe you can roll that into your new plan if you'd rather go that way. So she's got a 403B and a 457. A lot of Oh, yeah, you can't people, roll that. People or, are like, hey, what is a 403B? What's a 457 plan? So 403B plans, that's school districts, yeah, yeah. hospitals, nonprofits right. have a 403B. Most people are can you know are familiar with the four hundred and one k very similar plan some nuances there right so she's going to save twenty percent at the community college should she go into a four hundred and three b she's already fully funding the Roth or should she go four fifty seven well the difference between a four hundred and three b and a four fifty seven is that the four fifty seven is a deferred comp plan but for large community colleges you're still investing in mutual funds. So you have access to the money at any time without a 10% penalty. So, But you want to look at the choices. <clears throat> I would have to learn a little bit more about the plan, but there's, I think there's some pros to the 457 plan than there are in the 403B plan. Would I put 20% in the 403B versus a brokerage account? I don't know. It depends on how much money she's got. Yeah, I think you're right. You got to look at the plan, see what the investment options are, right? I don't know how old she is. I don't know how much money she's got. I don't know when she wants to retire. So if just off the cuff, already funding a Roth IRA, 
Would you go pre-tax, 403B, 457, or, or a retirement plan, or would you go brokerage account? And a 403B or 457, do either of those have a Roth option? I Most of them do. Most of them do. I would check that. I would do Bro- that. I do that over brokerage, unless you want to build up your brokerage account to buy a home or something like that, right? Yeah. I think it's easier just to put the 20% in one of the retirement plans through your paycheck. And then you don't even think about it, and right? You're done. I, yeah. Right. And then if you have a Roth option, go 10% Roth, 10% pre-tax. There you go. You probably get more complex than that, but I think. <laughs> At least that's a start. Yeah. Without knowing anything else about you, yeah. that's what we'd say. And then just borrow money from your sister. <laughs> She's got millions. Have her sell, sell her car. She doesn't really need it. Whether you're getting ready to retire or already living that dream, you got to make sure everything you've saved will cover your expenses for the rest of your life. Watch Protecting Your Retirement Income on YMYW TV to learn how to safeguard your retirement nest egg. Joe and Big Al are joined by special guest Brian Perry, the Chief Investment Officer at Pure Financial Advisors, who explains how playing it too safe with your investments can backfire. Watch Your Money, Your Wealth, 6.30 a.m. Sunday mornings on CBS 8 in San Diego and Cairo 7 in Seattle, or watch it on demand in the podcast show notes, where you can also download 10 Steps to Improve Investing Success. This guide contains key investing principles that will broaden your investment universe and help control your emotions and your risk, which can lead to higher returns in your portfolio and retiring with more wealth. Take your investing skills to the next level. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app, go to the show notes, watch YMYW TV, and download 10 Steps to Improve Investing Success for free. You'll find it all right before the episode transcript. All right, we got Hey Andy Joe now. Greetings from K Dog. K Dog. Awesome. Northern Indiana. K Dog. <laughs> I love the show. Discovered about a month ago. I can't get enough. My drink of choice is a little strong black. All right. The guy's named K Dog. And he drinks black coffee. Coffee. I drink plenty of beer in my younger days. That's where the K Dog came from. Yeah, I, I think so. You can't get rid of K Dog. <laughs> it's, it's stuck, right? <laughs> Uh, so coffee and water is about as exciting as it gets for this guy. My wife will slug some wine down on occasion, but those occasions are far and few between. My wife has a 2011 Toyota Sienna, and I drive a 2013 Buick LaCrosse. Oh, little Buick. I'm an IT manager, and my bride is a teacher's aide at a local elementary school. We got about $135,000 between us, and I throw about $12,000 pre-tax annually in my 401k. That number includes the company match. Yep. She's 57, I'm 56. House is worth $600,000, and we have about $100,000 left on the mortgage yet, 2.625%. We plan to live in the house until we die. Wow. We're no longer able to live on our own. Total 401k balances is $900,000. Social Security is 60, at 67 is $54,000 annually. Cash in hand, about fifteen k. I'm thinking we want about $6,000 a month after taxes in retirement. No pensions or annuities. If you don't mind, can you answer a couple questions? Here they are. I had a financial planner tell me I needed to start saving cash or start a Roth IRA. And understood the need for a Roth, but his reasoning surprised me. Ooh, oh, and this should build. This will be good. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> What could it be? Oh, I don't know. I'm excited. He told me if we retire early and only take a minimal amount of our pre-tax dollars as income, we would qualify for free Obamacare before we are eligible for Medicare. That would allow us to withdraw approximately $28,000 in pre-tax dollars, pay no income tax, and qualify for free health care. We would need to live off of the Roth money or cash we have on hand. Is that really possible? (laughs) All right. I'm also curious about what your thoughts are in getting the mortgage paid off early or taking the extra payments and dumping them into a Roth. Mathematically, it makes sense. But getting rid of a $900 a month payment in retirement is also very attractive. At a current payment rate, it'll be paid off in four years. If we don't pay any extras, it'll be 10 years before it's gone. I appreciate your spitball, fellas. I hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving. Oh, we're right on. Oh, we're... <laughs> well, this was sent not... on November twentieth. <laughs> well, we're, we're, maybe hey, it's... Happy Thanksgiving for twenty twenty four. 
Well, we're, we're not, not quite ready. <laughs> we're really early. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're very early on this one. All right. So he's got a financial planner. He's like, hey, man, yep. you need to save some money in cash. He doesn't tell us how much money he wants to spend, though. Well, yeah, he wants to spend about 6000 a month. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's... Call it, what, seventy two grand. Okay, and so he wants to bridge the gap. Well, well, I mean, he's got. So let's see, what what's he need? Seventy two fifty four. He needs about eighteen thousand. Call it twenty into a nine hundred thousand. Right, that's what he's got currently, and and it's going to be more when he retires. I don't know when he wants to retire. I don't think he said that. But he's bridging the gap until Medicare. So Medicare's at sixty five. I know, but so I, how many years does he want to bridge seventy two thousand? Because he's know. not going to claim Social Security till sixty seven. Right. Well, he, he does say he wants to retire early, according to the financial planner. He told me if we were to retire early and only take a minimal amount of tax dollar, pre tax dollars. Yeah, but I think the, the cash on hand or the Roths need to be probably five hundred grand to bridge the gap, depending on what retire well, early is. But that's not the question. And we don't know when he wants to retire. His question is, if he does retire early, can he pull, can he take money out of the Roth or pay in cash and then get the uh, Affordable Care Act insurance? I understand that, but he does not have any money in Roth. He, well, he wants to put it in, so okay. he's going to work for a while. How old is k Dog? He's 56. Okay, he's going to retire early. So let's say four years, 60. <laughs> We don't know. We're guessing. That that would have been helpful to know. Right. So let's say four years. He retires at 60. Hypothetical. K-Dog retires at 60. He's got to bridge 60 to 67 of income because he wants to take it then. Yeah. His Medicare is going to come in at 65. So can he pull the money out of his retirement account and qualify for Obamacare or Affordable Care Act? The answer is absolutely yes, but he's not going to have enough money to cover $72,000 a year of income. Right. Yeah, so so I guess your point. So we'll start there. Is when he retires is very important in this whole equation whether this actually works or not. If he retires, let's just say he retires at sixty four, so there's one year gap right between then and Medicare, right? So so then maybe it works because he will need fifty thousand bucks. Because now oh. you you got nine hundred thousand. You're adding twelve thousand. You know over what seven, six or seven, eight more years, right? So, you know, probably have 1.3, 1.4, you know, something like that million. But what is the, the so the income for Medicare or for um, the Affordable Care Act to get the subsidies yeah. is? For for a married couple, I don't have the table in front of me, but I'm going to say it's low 20,000s. And, and so, and at times a poverty level or something, right? Well, well, the poverty level is a number, and then it can be up to four times. So if you want free insurance, it's got to be below that 20,000 20. number. Yeah. Now, and that's gross income, not taxable income. So I think there's a misunderstanding there. You may pay no income taxes, but you may have to pay some insurance if you're over that. You just have to look up the table, what the table is for a married couple. I'm thinking it's around 20,000. But if you make 28 or whatever the number you said, you're still going to get reimbursements from Obamacare because you're within four times the poverty level, which in that example would be about 80,000. But here's the problem with that is that he wants to spend 72, right? Yeah. Okay. And then 28 is the max that let's say he can pull from his retirement account. Right. So $44,000 needs to come from somewhere. Yeah. So his, his planner said, save money in cash. Right. So let's say he retires at 60. He needs 44,000 times five is $220,000 in cash or $220,000 in a Roth IRA to cover the shortfall for that gap period. Right. And he's got 15,000. He's got 15 grand. And he's saving 12,000 a year. Including man. Including man. Yeah. So we're a little bit short here. Right. right. So it's like the planner throws out, hey, well. <laughs> You know what? If, if you win the lottery, you'll be a millionaire. It's like no. Sh so I, I guess. Like, come on, give some practical. Uh, yes, I mean I can throw out some stats. <laughs> you know what? If you make a billion dollars a year of income, you'll be in the highest tax bracket. <laughs> okay, that will never happen. It's impossible. Well, if if I go back to my premise of retiring at sixty four, then you probably have enough saved to cover one year. Okay. 
right? <laughs> or right? Yes. If you retire at 60, there's where's the cash? The company? guy's grinding to save all this cash. He's not going to put any money in his 401k. That 12000 is not going to go to cash. It's after tax dollars that he's not going to get a tax deduction. Here, here's the other. It's going to go into cash. And he's going to save 17 cents on Medicare pre or <laughs> <laughs> premiums. Well, he will save for a year or whatever. <laughs> I'm sure it's more than that. But anyway, here's another problem. He's grossing one hundred thirty-five thousand, and he thinks he can live on seventy-two thousand. Really? Have you tried? Yeah. Try it right now, and try saving thirty, forty thousand a year, and see if you can live on seventy-two. If you can do it, maybe this works. If it doesn't, you're probably working to sixty-seven. Yep. Yeah, he's close. He's done a good job. He got a million bucks. It's all in a retirement account. I would look at, all right, well, you make $135,000. you are in the 22% tax bracket. That bracket's going to be twenty four twenty five. dollars Does it make sense to now get some money into a Roth, not necessarily a contribution, but do a conversion? Let's say instead of taking that $6,000 that you were going to jam into cash, you do a conversion for $35,000 to get into a Roth, and you pay $6,000 in, in taxes. So you're leveraging the conversion. So $6,000 is going to go to the Roth, or you're going to give it to the IRS to pay the tax on the conversion. I just made that number up. Yeah. But, yeah. So it's 6000 uh, point or 7000 actually. Right. Let's say it's 22%. So 27000 bucks. Right. That's pretty close. Yeah, you were. All right. Right. Yeah. So at any rate, yeah. The second question is, should you pay off the mortgage early? 2.6%, not really. However, I, I get the idea of not having a mortgage. If you want to do some of both, Roth and mortgage, go for it. But I wouldn't put a lot of money at paying the mortgage off at that low of interest rate. Yeah, but $900 a month, you just get rid of a $900 a month payment. And you don't have to stress about that. I, you've got 100 I mean, you have income now. I would pay it off. I mean, I get the arbitrage. Oh, you would? Right? Okay. Yeah, I would. Because I think he spends more than he realizes. Well, I think he does too. I, so here's what I would do. I would put money to Roth. Well, this is where the big wallet came from. Remember you asked me, which would I do? I said, I'd do both. Yeah. I'd put money into a Roth and pay off my mortgage early. Yeah, and you said, oh, checks. look at the big wallet on Big Al. And somehow that stuck. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, I'm going to pay off the mortgage right now and save a <laughs> bunch of money. <laughs> Eric from the mothership, the homeland. Wow. Where you're from? Minneapolis. In Minneapolis. What's that? Yeah. You know him? <laughs> Probably. How many people are there in Minneapolis? Uh, I know them all. <laughs> people. Uh, it seems like you know a lot from Minnesota. Uh, dear Joan, I love the show. I'm single, drive a 2020 Land Rover Discovery. Oh, it's my boy E. I call him E Dog. E Dog. <laughs> that works. I love to drink a good Manhattan. I'm a doctor and currently a W 2 employee. I would appreciate a good spitball from you. I currently have seven hundred thousand in a pre-tax four hundred one k, two hundred thousand in a Roth four hundred one k, one hundred fifty one thousand in a Roth IRA, two hundred thirty two thousand in a brokerage account, and two fifty in a deferred comp, which pays one tenth starting in ten years when I hope to retire. Currently fifty seven years old. I was divorced three years ago and pay eleven thousand dollars a month to my ex-wife for her life. Wow, eleven that's, grand. That's up there. Oh <laughs> my, eleven thousand. That's a lot of cash. It is. That's way more than most people make. It is. So maybe He's a doctor. Maybe he makes some good money. I'm guessing. I don't need to rub it in there. That's eleven thousand after tax each month. He writes. I lost my ass. That's <laughs> the divorce. <laughs> so I'm wanting to plan my contributions carefully. My question has to do with my 401k. I'm solidly in the 37% federal income tax bracket. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, it's not a tax deduction anymore, Alan. Before that $11,000, he could write off on his tax return. Well, it depends when your divorce went through, but I think three years ago. Uh, that's, uh, that were, was right out of the car. It was. I'm guessing it's not a deduction. Was it? I don't, time goes by so fast. I think, it, yeah, I think it was more than three years ago where that changed. I'm maxing out my 401k currently with one half going pre tax, one half going into Roth, plus my company puts in $14,000 per year pre tax. In addition, 
I'm contributing ten thousand five hundred after tax in my four hundred one k, and then converting to my Roth every year. Plus, I do my full backdoor Roths in addition to adding about eighty thousand dollars per year to my brokerage account. I nearly zeroed out <clears throat> asset wise in my divorce. So, what I would like to know is. If I should be putting all my 401k contributions at pre-tax now to take advantage of my tax bracket or all Roth. The Roth conversions in my 401k, even a consideration. In retirement, in addition to Social Security, I have $136,000 in pension, $35,000 in rental income, and a trust that I inherited that will pay me approximately $90,000 a year in taxable income for life. Yeah. Hey. If, so if you keep it score... In, income of two hundred sixty thousand, current liquid assets of about one point three million. Two hundred sixty thousand in retirement. Mm -hmm. One hundred thirty-five thousand plus a little rental plus a little inherited I, I'm, trust. I'm assuming that and the salary had a factor in the eleven thousand. I think so. Going out the door. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so two sixty single. Do you think he's going to get married again? No, I, I don't. Think I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> With you in that case, <laughs> I don't know. I think that'd be tough. That would be tough. So if I was Eric, yeah, I'm going 100% Roth. Perfect. And I'm not me. <laughs> I'm going 50-50 at most Roth. I, I probably would do less than that. I probably would do 25% Roth. $260,000 of income in retirement. <laughs> but what's his tax bracket going to be? Well, it's already off it's, the charts. It's going to be giant. <laughs> I think 37 is going to be cheap for Eric. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. It's, I don't, I just don't like doing big amounts going to Roth when you're in the highest tax bracket. Yeah. Uh, but I get it. I mean, so we're, we're scheduled to go back to 39.6, but we're also supposed to get our state tax deduction back, which offsets that. So it's, that's about same, same. Could it go up above 39.6? Absolutely could. So I think that's your, your gamble there. Well, he's young enough where he's got time, right? It, oh, how old is he? Fifty something. Fifty seven. He's fifty seven years old, and, and he's got seven hundred thousand of pre tax right now. It's not like it's a couple million where he's still adding, right? I don't know. I probably put twenty five percent of Ross, seventy five percent tradition. He's not going to miss the tax deduction. <laughs> he's already ripping checks for eleven thousand to the ex. <laughs> I know, but that's taking just... a couple extra bucks to the IRS. That's... To... That's, you have a big fat pot of tax free money in the future. That's painful when you sign that tax return. Oh. <laughs> anyway, two different answers. So, Eric, you pick what you want. No, I don't know. I'm closer to Eric's age. Not by long, I mean, than he's me. way older than me. <laughs> way older. He's, uh, uh, but he's still young. He's uh, just about split our difference. He's still young. He's a <laughs> young cat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I like Roth. I mean, if I'm in a really high tax bracket, I'm gonna you're go going to go all Roth. You're going Roth. Yep. Because I have cash flow. I yep. have income. You can afford it. And it's like, I'm not going to remember the tax deduction of a couple of bucks 20 years from now. Yeah. What I'm going to remember in 20 years from now is that there's going to be a really good size tax-free pool of money that I don't have to worry about the IRS. I took the uncertainty of taxes off the table. Well, and given that you've already got all this fixed income right. and, rent, and rental income and trust income, which is trust income, which, you don't think he's got a, a, some more cash coming, which is all ordinary income. Yeah. So there, there's some validity in that, Eric. I still would, I wouldn't do all myself, but I get Joe's point. All right. Please use OC Birdman in South OC. Oh boy. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> OC Birdman in South OC. Is this like a, a riddle? <laughs> He's from Orange County. He's the Birdman. In, Birdman. In, in the South. So maybe. We got K Dog. We got Birdman. <laughs> we got South OC, Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, San Clemente. All right. Long time listener. Four years. Birdman. <laughs> Killing it. First time contributor. I drive a 2018 Ford Edge. And yeah, my wife drives a 2021 Kia Telluride. Right. Little drink of choice is a Paloma. Oh, you like? I don't know what that is. That's a little tequila, ah. or a bourbon on the rocks. And we have a one-year-old Australian Kelpie, Kelpie, yep. Kelpie puppy named Lulu. All right. 
my wife and I bought our house in 2012 at the bottom of the real estate market for 450 grand. It's now worth 1 million. Unfortunately, we are in the planning stages of getting divorced. Oh boy. Yeah, too bad. Andy, we got the divorced little. <laughs> got it going. Hey, it's two questions. Come on. <laughs> we tend to sell our, well, we had a widow question, a divorce, a couple of divorce yeah, questions. We're, yeah, okay. Yeah. So they bought their dream home. Well, it, stop calling yourself the Birdman. <laughs> Birdman in South OC. Okay. <laughs> That's a little piece of life advice. Is that Was that a factor here in what's going on? <laughs> there could be. We're in the planning stage of getting divorced. We intend to sell our home, and we will want to take advantage of the $500,000 capital gains exemption while we're still married. My question is, if we sell the home in February and finalize the divorce later in 2024, how would we file taxes in 2025, married versus single, and still qualify for the exemption? Or should we wait until 2025 to finalize the divorce so we can file 2024 taxes as married finally jointly? Love this show. Love you, Birdman. <laughs> Thanks for the spitball. All right, good question. Him and Mrs. Birdman, Birdwoman. Yeah, right. Splitting. Ex, ex Birdwoman. Splitting. S soon to be. So, so $500,000. So you get the 121 tax exclusion. So as long as you live in the house two out of the last five years, you can exclude $500,000 of growth from your primary residence. If you're single, it's 250000 It's cut in half. That's right. And so, here, yeah, so you don't have to be married. So so let's say you get divorced and you're single. So just make sure when you, the in the divorce decree, that you each get 50% of the home. So when you sell it, you each get your $250,000 exclusion and then same, right? You've, you've got the same issue. Otherwise, if one person gets the home and the other one doesn't, you might have trouble getting the full 500. So let's say he gets, Birdman is taking the home, but he's selling it. So does he get, if he, if Birdman gets 100% of the, pro, uh, I can't keep saying Birdman either. <laughs> you, keep, you have been, <laughs> just keep it up. If he's like, all right, I get the house, let's sell the house and I'm going to take the million dollars. <clears throat> but I, they have to be married for them to, for him to get the full 500,000 exclusion if he's walking with the mill. Well, that's what I'm saying. If he gets the house and he sells it when he's single, he, he gets, gets 250. 250. But if in the divorce decree, if it's split 50-50, it's split when they sell it, they each get half the proceeds. They each put their share on their return. They get 250,000 each. That's what I would do. All right. Very good. Thanks for the question. Is the Federal Reserve about to start cutting interest rates? Can the Magnificent Seven continue driving stock markets higher? Will domestic or international politics sink the markets? Join Brian Perry, CFP, CFA at noon Pacific time on Wednesday, February 28th for a Q1 financial market update webinar and find out. Brian will provide his insight into the state of the markets, the economy, and the world, and he'll answer your financial questions live and in real time. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app to go to the show notes and register for the webinar. It's free, but you have to sign up in order to receive the link to attend. Uh, let's see. Olympic Palencia. We got Laura from Seattle. Or Peninsula. Peninsula. What did I say? <laughs> Peninsula. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm going on fumes Yeah, fumes, eh? I got this. Yeah, okay. I'm going to pull through. Hey, Andy, Al, Joe. Love your podcast and appreciate the humor. Interwoven into what can often be a stressful topic. Not for us. Yeah, just got to keep it light and yeah. easy. We like it. Yeah. It's only money. <laughs> It's all it so, is. It's all your it's financial, financial well-being forever. Financial well-being. It's <laughs> either, you know, you got a roof over your head or you're homeless. <laughs> to be blunt. It's either steaks or uh, ramen. All right. So it is stressful. That's why we try to keep be. it light. We try it to keep be. it fun. Yep. Uh, Helping people out here. You know, I think what's super stressful for a lot of people, they're used to a paycheck, money coming in every single month or week or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden they retire. It's like yep. the money is not showing up in the check-in account. I do not want to spend that money. I said, I saved it. I not, I'm going to blow through it. I don't want to touch it. I get the feeling. All right. Is that why you're still here? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be here through my last guest. 
Question for you. My understanding is that conventional withdrawal strategy is to tap the brokerage account, then the traditional IRA, and lastly, the Roth IRA. Would it make sense for me to first draw for my traditional IRA in order to decrease the amount of future RMDs, which will I need to begin taking at 75, right? I have $1.3 million in my brokerage account. Husband has no brokerage. $1.1 million in my traditional IRA. Husband has a dollar sixty-two. Oh my gosh, he's just oh my, I have millions. And he's millions got, and millions. Got, and my husband, he's got nothing. <laughs> Tell me what happened to my life. Actually, husband has 162K. Oh. Husband, no brokerage. <laughs> I have several million in a retirement account. Husband, no IRA. <laughs> I, I like the one point million in IRA. Husband, a buck sixty two. Uh, hundred six thousand dollars in my inherited IRA. Inherited prior to the Secure Act. Thirty thousand dollars in my Roth IRA. Husband has sixty thousand. Oh, husband wins on one thing. The Roth. He's been listening to the show big time. Oh. Uh, I got $200,000 in cash and CDs. I have a pension of approximately $9,000 annually with a 2% COLA, 75% survivor benefit. Our annual spending after taxes is $108,000 to live comfortably with a little bit of travel built in. It looks like my RMD would be pretty close to the 3 or 4% safe withdrawal rate, so I don't really see the benefit of doing Roth conversions. Although I understand the traditional IRA could potentially be much higher by the time I'm 75. Not to sound cold, but we don't, I don't want to leave anything to my husband. <laughs> not to sound cold, but we do not have any financial legacy goals for our children. That's cold. That's actually, that's what most people say. It's okay. It'd be nice, but it's not necessary. <laughs> You're adding your own <laughs> inflection. I like it. They are secure on their own, and they have careers, and they will not need the money. If they did, I could see the value in doing Roth conversions to save them some tax burden in the future. If I'm off base here and should be converting, I appreciate your thoughts. My husband will begin taking his Social Security beginning in early 2024 and will approximately see $24,000 a year. I plan on waiting until age 70 and will receive $36,000 a year. I'm currently 61. My husband's 67. We're both retired. He drives a white truck. This is how much I know about vehicles. How much do you know about your wife? That he's got a dollar sixty-two in his IRA. He's got no <laughs> brokerage. And he's got sixty grand in a, in a Roth, and he drives a white truck. <laughs> it's, that's all you need to know. Uh, I don't know what he drinks. I don't know what he eats. <laughs> I don't know where he sleeps. In fact, I haven't seen him for a while. Oh, uh, literally no cool on what maker year it is. That's kind of funny. I drive a 2007 Lexus 350. She knows uh, that, though. Yeah, she yeah. knows her car. Oh, yeah, sure. Husband does not drink, but I enjoy a glass of Pinot Grigio. Thanks for any non-advice you have. Yeah. Ah, uh, Laura, great question. A lot of good material in this yeah, one. Yeah, plenty. Where do, where do you want to start? Well, she's got one point three million dollars in a retirement account. Husband has zero. Yeah, like sixty-two. <laughs> He's sixty. She's sixty-two. Six, years six, Sixty-one. Okay, so, so she's got fifteen years. So I did a little math. So it's going to be three million dollars. Two point five at six percent. Yep. Three million at seven or eight percent. Right. So three million dollars. Let's say your RMD at seventy-five is going to be four percent. Yeah. Four times three is 120. 120,000 of ordinary income. Ordinary income, plus your Social Security of 34, given inflation, let's call it 40. Given your husband's Social Security right. of 34. And your pension. And your pension thousand. of 10. That's 200 and some odd thousand dollars of income. And your brokerage account, interest and dividends. Yeah, 1.1. 1. 1. And capital gains coming out of there. So it's not about necessarily a wealth transfer play. It's about keeping those RMDs in check because the RMDs is going to continue to grow on her. As she ages, more and more money has to come out of the account. As more and more money comes out of the account, what do you think that's going to do to her tax bracket? 
it potentially is just going to keep going up and more of that money is going to be lost to taxes unnecessarily. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, when they think about this, they read an article that says, or they talk to somebody, you're too old to convert. There's not enough time to make it up. Right. Or, or do you want to leave a legacy to your children? Right. But the thing is, what we're trying to get across here is this is for you. It's not for your kids. It's for you to save taxes. Think of the tax bracket you're going to be in starting at age 75. That's what you're trying to avoid, those higher taxes in the future. How about the white truck husband dies? Yeah. He doesn't have any assets. Now she's single. Now much higher now, tax now rates. Now you're at a single tax bracket versus right. a married tax bracket. Right. Yeah, you want to definitely get money out of the retirement account. You can live off the brokerage account. Start doing conversions now. You can convert to the top of the 12 over the next several years. Maybe tell your husband to push out his Social Security a little bit to keep some of that income off the tax return. Maybe you pay him $24,000 a year out of your brokerage account. Yeah, or maybe you go to the top of the 22% bracket, or maybe you go to the IRMA rates, right? I mean, there's all kinds of ways to think about this, but yeah, you definitely want to get money out of the IRA into Roth in this particular circumstance. All right, Laura, great question. Thank you. Hope that helped. RJ from Anaheim, California. He goes, hey, Joe, Al, Roth conversion question from Anaheim, California. I'm retiring at 62 next year. Wife will be turning 70 next year and already retired. We will both start collecting Social Security next year. Total income with pensions and Social Security will be about $100,000. Expenses calculated at one hundred twenty per year. House paid. No debt. Counts $1.4 million in a retirement account, six thirty dollars in a Roth, and hundred ninety dollars in a taxable account. We've been doing conversions up to the IRMA threshold of about $50,000 per year for the last four years. Good for you, RJ. I bet he's been listening to this show for four years, Big it's, Al. It's possible. 50000 bucks Because what, what is he? Six thirty in a Roth? That's pretty good. That's excellent. Now for the question. He's modeling some software for a Roth conversion. Just retire. <laughs> Go to Portugal. Con convert as much as you can and travel. Have a cocktail. <laughs> suggesting we are doing conversions up to the 24% tax bracket. Whoa, boy. That's a big bracket. It is. Uh, for 2024, in a little smaller 2025, and that would drain our taxable for best possible lifetime tax. Okay? Okay. He's modeling this thing out. He's going to sure. convert to the – what's his life – so what he's doing, he's like, he's going to do – some giant conversions. Get it all out. Yeah, and then see what this looks see like. See what it looks like and what's going to be the maximum tax savings over my lifetime. Right. And he's 62. So according to actuarial tables, he will live till, let's say, 84. 90. I mean, it could be more, but I'm just saying what it is currently. Right. Our thoughts are to stay the course and keep doing conversions to earn a threshold. Also, models say... Take out my rollover first instead of my wife's. She comes to RMD age in three years. So that was a little confusing. Huh. I disagree with that. I disagree with that too. Yeah, what, you always want to convert the older of the two if you have a choice. What model is he modeling? I don't know. Because she's going to have to take her RMD pretty quickly. We would appreciate your spitballing questions. And thank you for the great content and podcast. We love IPAs. And we'll go down to one car next year, 2022, Suburban, Suburb, sub, Subaru, 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 geez, Louise. <laughs> Subaru Outlook. All right. RJ. All right. Cool. So he's modeling. Yeah. Stop modeling. <laughs> Stick with what you're doing. He's got 1.3 million. The wife, I, I'm guessing the wife has what? Where's that total? That well, I'm assuming it's total. It's that must be total because he didn't say it was just his. So I I would convert your wife's first because she's older. That makes a lot of sense. The only reason why this modeling, if he's using some sort of software program, the only reason why I could see why they would model his first because he probably has a lot more money in a retirement account is the only reason. Yeah, but still, that makes it no sense. It doesn't make any sense. You just convert all of hers out. Yeah, if it's small, right? And I wouldn't, I don't think you got to go to the 24. I think 12, I don't know what your income is right now. He's just going to the Irma limit. 
Irma limit. Oh yeah. So Irma limit for those of you that yeah, so don't that, know what Irma means. That's two hundred six thousand. So that's your Medicare premium. So how Medicare works is that they look at a two year look back and depending on what your income is, is going to determine your Medicare premiums. And so if you're adding ordinary income, so you have to be careful when you are converting <clears throat> once you get to Medicare age 65 or around that age, because the more income that you have from, let's say, a conversion is going to add to ordinary income. And then that potentially could increase your overall Medicare benefits. So he's right on. He's looking at it. He's like, hey, I'm just going to go to the top of whatever Irma limit to keep my Medicare premiums at bay. But then he's start playing with some software. And he's like, should I go to the 24, which is a giant bracket. He can convert what $400,000 or something stupid. That, yeah, that's correct. So that's going to blow up his liquidity. His RMDs would be nothing. I would not do that. Yeah, I would. I'd either go to the top of the 22% bracket or Irma. They're actually close to each other. I, I, I would not do more than that. There's no need to. He's 62. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's got plenty of time to get the money out. Yeah. I totally agree. No. I, yeah, I don't think there's that big a sense of urgency. I mean, the reason you do it, you get it over with and don't think about it. Rip the Band-Aid out. And I get it, but I think you can pay less taxes by doing this a little bit more sensibly. And at $1.1 million, he's already got six hundred grand in a Roth. Continue to go to the top of the 22. He's going to have a million plus in a Roth IRA. You take an RMD out of the retirement account. The max RMD, if he does this correctly, could be like thirty, forty thousand bucks. Yeah. Plus, you got one hundred ninety thousand in the taxable account. You're going to eat that all up. It's going to be dead. Paying taxes. I don't think you want to do that. Right. I would do a conversion. Yeah. Twelve twenty two. I like that. Here's the modeling that he should be doing, is to take a look at. All right. Here's my income. Here's my expenses. Here's my draw rate. And then map that out with inflation and put the right taxes in there and say, all right, well, if I take the RMD from the retirement account, it's going to be X. How much excess income do I need? Well, I can take it from the Roth and pay zero. And I can take a little bit from the brokerage account and pay potentially zero. Your money's going to stretch that much further. So you want to have a balance in all of them. Sure. At least to utilize the zero or 10% tax bracket from a, a qualified distribution, right? Right. And the, the good news is RJ already has a lot of balance. So we're just wanting to make this even better. Right. He's going on the other extreme. You got to tell us what the modeling is. He probably made it himself. It's Excel. Andy, wonderful job putting the show together once again. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for running on fumes for us to finish out the show today. Oh, we killed it. <laughs> I got plenty of energy. You know, it was fun. It was. It's always a good time. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week. The show's got your money well. K Dog, J Dog, and A Dog, The Lincoln Lawyer, Dry Cider, and Tequila Stories in the Derails at the end of the episode, so stick around. The way I see it, people who would enjoy YMYW but don't know about it are just friends we haven't met yet. And you can help us with that by telling your friends about it because this show would not be a show without you. Sharing your honest reviews and ratings for your money, your wealth helps too, especially in Apple Podcasts. But Amazon, Audible, CastBox, Good Pods, Pandora, Player FM, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Podknife, and Spotify accept them too. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. While a retirement spitball analysis from Joe and Big Al is a great starting point, a free financial assessment with the experienced professionals at Pure is a comprehensive review of your entire financial situation to uncover more strategies to help you have a successful retirement. To schedule yours, click the free assessment banner in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257. Meet in person at any of our locations around the country or online via Zoom. No matter where you are, the Pure team will work with you to create a detailed plan specially tailored to your retirement needs and goals. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. I don't know if I could ever go by the name K-Dog. J-Dog. J-Dog. This is J-Dog here. <laughs> Talking about the financial report. 
Oh, yeah. I don't think I can do a dog. I, I don't know. That doesn't <laughs> sound good. I don't know if I could. Yeah, you are a dog. A, do- a dog. <laughs> I'd have trouble even saying that. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever called anyone dog. <laughs> you can call yourself dog. What just up, not, dog? Just not someone else. What's up, dog? K hey, dog? <laughs> Isn't that uh, Matthew McConaughey? Some kind of a Buick, Buick guy? No, he's a uh, Buick. Um, no, he's something else. He's, he's a Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah, that's it. The Lincoln lawyer, <laughs> not Buick. All right. Dry cider. What does that mean? I don't know. Dry, is that like dry? Is it I think it's like hard small? cider, but it's dry as opposed to sweet. So it's probably very tart. Or is it dry as in like a dry county? <laughs> I don't think so. It's capital D R Y. I think of dry as no, no liquid. Yeah, no eat, alcohol. Eat, eat some powder. <laughs> Call it good. I would say non-alcoholic powder. Maybe. I, I like a Paloma. A tequila and grapefruit, maybe? Yeah, really. I'm not much of a tequila fan. Ooh, love tequila. Had some very many poor experiences. I had didn't. one giant poor experience <laughs> that made sure I was never doing it again. <laughs> yeah. My last poor experience was in my 40s, and I swore that's it. That's it, huh? Tequila? Nope. All right. 